Well, you probably know what that is, Sooner fans. Oklahoma's 23-point win over Villanova back at the Pearl Harbor Classic in Hawaii in December. You know what that game means right now? Absolutely nothing. Get that game out of your memory bank as much as possible. The rematch between Oklahoma and Villanova is about now. It's about a trip to the national championship on Monday night. What happened in Hawaii should stay in Hawaii means absolutely nothing. Villanova's a better team right now. That game that Oklahoma won meant that the Sooners were a team that was on another level. Okay, all right, nice win at the time, but it means nothing right now. What Saturday means is that you have to beat Villanova again. And Villanova's going to be tougher this time. By the way, Vegas thinks that Villanova's going to win. Villanova is a slight underdog, according to the odds makers, to uh, get revenge on the Sooners. What Oklahoma has to do is prove that they're the best team. So it's up to Oklahoma, but they can't live on what happened four months ago. They can't just show up in Houston thinking that they've got Monday locked up just because they beat Villanova four months ago. That's a trap, and that will get them sent home pretty quick. And, by the way, if you haven't seen the Sooners play this season, and you might be thinking, well, what can you expect to see? Well, hopefully, I guess from a selfish standpoint, hopefully you'll see what I've seen and what so many Sooner fans have seen, um, at least for the past couple of games, you know, in the Anaheim region where they were superb. And that is team basketball at its finest, where the assist ratio really showed that it's not just a team that relies on one-on-one -on -one play to where they can find the open man. And, yes, Buddy Hill has been instrumental. That's no question. Played one of his best games of the season, which says a lot against the Ducks, where he went off for nearly 40. Whatever Oregon threw at him, he was ready. But also, too, Jordan Woodard. You know, his improvement is is phenomenal. He is averaging 13 points per game this season. We saw the big game he had in Anaheim against AM the game prior. He contributed as well against Oregon. Also, too, Isaiah Cousins. You know, this is a guy that, from beyond the arc, He's consistent as well, 42% from three-point range. And Ryan Spangler, inside, nine rebounds per game. His rebound total, it's been solid. And then Kadeem Latin, when he stays out of foul trouble, he's a force to be reckoned with as well. So this Oklahoma team, to me, showed that, you know, it's not just talented and they can handle anybody, but the chemistry. The chemistry is there. And I'll talk about this a little bit more at the end of my video, but... These guys know each other so well from starting so many games together over the seasons. I think that will really play well into their favor facing the Wildcats. And speaking of the Wildcats, um, you know, Villanova, how did they make it to this point? I think they've done it with defense. I think they've done it by forcing turnovers. And for the Sooners, you know, if there is one Achilles heel for this team, They've turned the ball over quite a bit. Even in the four wins in the NCAA tournament, they're averaging 13 and a half turnovers per game. A stat like that really plays into the hands of the Wildcats, especially with those guards. Villanova knows that they've had dependability from their three starting guards, in particular from Ryan Archie Diacono. Um, Ryan is a scrappy type of guard. Defensively, he's not afraid to get in there and get the ball. As we saw against Kansas when the Jayhawks were down three in that regional final, needing a three to tie. But it was Archie Diacono who forced a turnover by swiping the ball and then Villanova securing it and thus eventually securing the game with a couple of late free throws to ice it. But the guard that worries me the most, if I'm a Sooner fan, is the 6'5 guard named Josh Hart. That's because of what he does on both sides of the court. And, by the way, his multidimensional game on offense. A guy with a nice jump shot, but also, too, it worries me the most, he's an attacker, okay? He can get to the free throw line because of the fact that he can force contact. Um, a player that you just never know what he's going to do. And, of course, defensively, um, just like the other guards for Villanova, um, he's not afraid either to play tight. And, and Villanova, by the way, Jay Wright, who's done a great job with the Wildcats, um, you never know what they're going to throw. They could throw, you know, man-to-man. -man. They could throw a zone defense at you. You know, Villanova is a team where you never know what you're going to get. But one thing you're going to be guaranteed to get is, is an aggressive uh, Josh Hart who can force turnovers. To me, he's the complete guard. I think he is the key to this game for Villanova. If he has an off game, I don't see Villanova winning this game at all. If he has a big impact, Villanova's got a pretty good shot. And then uh, filling up the guard rotation for Villanova as far as your starting five, uh, Jalen Brunson, a guy with a modest 10 points per game, and by the way, three assists. And then the front court, um, 
you know, Spangler as well as Ladin know that uh, they're going to have their hands full with uh, Daniel Ochefu, a guy that is consistent from the field, in the paint, um, makes about 60% of his field goals, but also is a good defender inside. And that will really play into another point, and that is foul difficulty. Kadeem Latin cannot get those ticky-tack cheap fouls that we've seen so often. If that happens, you know, Dante Buford better be ready. You know, you're going to have to have uh, McNeese ready as well. Um, these guys are going to have to be ready to come in and uh, play more minutes. So Latin, you know, he doesn't have to have a monster-type um, rebound or monster-type uh, point game. But he does need to be a presence as far as block, you know, shot blocking. But also, too, um, he just needs to be a presence, period, okay? If, if, he, if he goes out with two quick fouls in the first six minutes of this game, that adds more pressure to Oklahoma's bench, okay? Which is played better, but you'd rather see Latin in there playing more basketball and a lot less time on the bench. We've seen Latin, like I said, pick up ticky tack fouls. That can't happen again uh, for Oklahoma to have any kind of a advantage in the paint. Otherwise, this is an area where Villanova can really expose the Sooners. Ochefu is going to be a load. And also, too, Chris Jenkins, um, he's a forward at 6'6", and he's a force inside and outside, too. Outside, you know, he makes about 36% of his three-point shots. Not bad for Ford. So, you know, Villanova with a balanced um, starting five. They don't have that superstar, per se, like a Buddy Heald, but it is a talented overall starting five. And again, defense is where they make their money. Um, they have forced no fewer than 11 turnovers, by the way, um, in the NCAA tournament. And by the way, the last time they had a game in which they had fewer than 10 turn, forced fewer than 11 turnovers, it was against Xavier back in late February. That was a game that Xavier won. And it's not just turnovers, but also points per game by the opponent. Villanova has really improved in this area, especially in postseason play. You realize that the Cats have not allowed a team in either the Big East tournament or March Madness to get 70 points or more. Now that is defensive play right there. I think for the Sooners, they need to get this thing at least in the mid-70s to have a good shot at winning. If the Sooners end up with a final score in the 60s, chances of winning don't look good. And if they end up with a final score anywhere in the 50s, they're not going to win, okay? Tempo is a main, main ingredient in this game. And the Sooners must have it like they did against A&M and against Oregon. Can't stress that enough. Take care of the ball, Oklahoma. There's going to be turnovers this game, but it's how many turnovers and what happens after the turnovers that could determine if the Sooners make it to Monday night and the national championship game. My final thoughts, look, the Sooners are going to have a tougher time winning this one because, again, I think defense is vital and the Wildcats are playing much better deep. But the superstar factor goes to Oklahoma. The experience factor goes to Oklahoma. You've got Heal, Woodard, Spangler, Cousins. They will be making their 105th consecutive start right there. And there's no price tag you can place on experience. I like the way the Sooners are playing right now, especially on the offensive side. And I think three-point shooting will be a key, too. Hopefully, the Sooners will be able to adapt to this environment of playing in a stadium where I hear it's tougher because the rims are a little bit harder. And also, too, the depth perception because of the drop-off between, you know, the floor and and the uh, seats, it's a little bit deeper, so you have to adapt to that. Hopefully the Sooners can do that. But I think this veteran is poised to do that. It'll be a much tighter game, but I think as far as the final outcome, same result as it was in December, but it'll be a much tougher game. Sooners by two, and I think that they will move on to Monday in all likelihood to face North Carolina, because I promise you, if Syracuse beats North Carolina, you know what? Shit's going to hit the fan. <laughs> Exactly. Villanova's had one heck of a season. So is Oklahoma. Should be a good game. Post game, I will have most likely on Saturday night. Boomer Sooner.